They look like Bigfoot, right? Am I the only one who sees this? Welcome everyone to our full 1.10 and Conservation DLC showcase video. We are back here on one of my favorite showcase maps. This one always meant a lot to me. And I figured, you know what? We might as well just sit down and check out all the awesome goodies that we have in store for us for 1.10 and the conservation DLC update. Before we do get started, I do want to thank Frontier for being able to send me the key as well as some early access. It helped out extremely well, especially in this case because, well, I'm about to enter a very busy time in life and this, this coming at this time was just exceptional, so I do have to extend them my greatest thanks. And I do have to extend a very fond farewell to Dahlia. She has been such a wonderful community manager and community rep that it's going to be so sad when she leaves. And I want all of you guys down there just to be able to send her off with some love. Go on the forums, go on Twitter, send her off with some love. She has done so much for this community. She's addressed so many issues that we've had with packs that have been addressed in, like, you know, bug fixes. That is just very important. But still, regardless... We have a lot of animals to check out today, and we're gonna get into that right away. This one, I really wanted to get into first. This is the Siamang. Now, the Siamang is, of course, a primate. Well, it's more so an ape, believe it or not. They're from Southeast Asia, specifically from around, like, you know, those little islands down there. It's very interesting just to see how diverse these, like, whole group of primates are. It really is exceptional just to see, like, you know, how Frontier was able to nail it with their calls. Even though they're kind of talking over me right now, it really is impressive just to see how well they were able to manage that. It really is just so incredible. And look at the baby. Oh my gosh, look at this little man. Also, I do want to address the fact that many people had some reservations about the Siamings not walking correctly. About the Siamings utilizing the chimp animations, it looks like they use some of them, but not for everything, which I think works out really good. Frontier was able to find a really good balance between utilizing old rigs as well as doing new stuff like this. Oh my god, this blew me away the first time I saw it, and I hope you guys, like, this is probably going to be the first thing that you guys try out. The brachiation now is really, really insane. It's so cool to see just how well they're able to kinetically move all across, like, their habitats and stuff. Granted, they can only use these climbing frames. This is actually a blueprint made by Frontier themselves. I have a video coming relatively soon on how to best use the climbing frames they could also use normal ones kind of like these as well as like you know why it's climbing frames yeah it's like a really good set right here we actually use that in the speed build later but it really is insane just to see how well these guys were able to manage to really capture the likeness of this animal some people may say it's a little bit too buff uh i think they work out really good though i think they're fantastic and it's just gonna be super cool just to see how well you guys make habitats for them because these guys will probably have the coolest habitats with the latest dlc i'm i literally can't wait to see what everyone makes with them just seeing these guys kinetically move around is going to be wicked awesome just to see in game and it's going to be super awesome to see how you guys perceive these now moving on from there we have a lot of different animals that we have not checked out just yet we also have the scimitar horned oryx this animal is really freaking beautiful. It's currently extinct in the wild. There have been small populations of these guys reintroduced into Chad, I believe, the country of Chad. Uh, but it's super cool just to get these guys in-game. They represent such a huge legacy in zoo conservation as of late. I believe they were only recently brought into zoos around the 1980s, maybe 1970s, and already they're starting to really up those numbers in their populations, at least in controlled environments. Uh, like I said before, they have been soft introduced into some areas back in Africa, but still there work tirelessly zoos across the world on trying to reintegrate their populations, but these guys look insane. Now, many of you guys may know that these animals are actually, or have been modded in the past. And look at the little baby. Oh my gosh, he's so adorable. Now, of course, I will have a video coming out relatively later this week on comparing and contrasting 
both the official animals and the modded animals just so you could see you know the differences between them both i love the baby so much it's so adorable it makes a little like ba sound and i just think that's adorable but these guys are wicked wicked beautiful it really is awesome just to see frontier pour the love into a creature that you know many people won't really appreciate all that much I know f a whole bunch of people on, like, you know, the forums and Reddit have been saying, like, we have too much hoofstock, we have too much hoofstock, there's too many four-legged animals, we need some different ones. I don't think we have enough, personally. I know that's very, you know, controversial to say, but hoofstock really is the core of zoos, and I really can't wait to see more of it get added. And speaking of that, we are moving on to our first equid. I believe that's been in a DLC. This is, of course, the Shavalsky's Wild Horse, otherwise known as a Przewalski's Wild Horse. These guys are exceptionally beautiful. And we can see the foals start to, like, take shape over here. They look incredible, but what I think looks even better is the adult. Look at these guys. I love how they actually have real horse animations instead of zebra animations. They poured in a lot more love into this animal than I was ever expecting. I really thought it would just be a zebra clone, but no, they did so much more for it. Another thing that I noticed is that their tail actually does have alpha planes, so that gives them just a little bit more detail, and the same goes for the oryx as well. You can kind of see that come into play right there. Just small details that you know, some people, like, you know, modders are really able to appreciate because it really is such an exceptional thing to see them pour the, you know, really hard work into there. Obviously, we can also see that these guys have color variation. This individual over here is a lot more darker colored and a lot more saturated than these. I think that's always exceptionally great to have, just to have that diversity in play. And yeah, these guys look incredibly beautiful. I really do love these. They're easily like one of my sleeper hits of the pack because they absolutely nailed it with them. And I can't wait to see what people start making with these, but also I can't wait to see everyone enjoy the horses just as they are because they really are incredible animals. I know that Bronx has like a huge herd of them. I think they have well around like 20. I could be wrong, but it really is super cool just to have like this kind of wildlife really represented in Planet Zoo. And they do it so well too. Now moving on through here, we have probably the most controversial animal when it was first revealed. We have the Amor Leopard. So it's not the African Leopard or the Persian Leopard. These guys are only found in a small pocketed region of Russia and I believe they may bleed into Korea. Let me actually check that Zoopedia really quick. Uh, Russia and China, my apologies, Korea is down there. But it really is really great to have these guys in the game nonetheless. Uh, I think they actually look a lot better than they were displayed in the picture itself. And their animations are just really good too. It seems like I don't really know what animations they're using. I don't really follow up with my big cats all that much. But I just think that these guys look exceptionally regal. Look at that pattern. Like with all those rosettes and stuff. Frontier absolutely nailed it with that. I think even like with the face cons Okay, my only my only point of contention is that the eyes feel a little bit too glassy. They feel a little bit too, like, desaturated. I would love to see them saturated just a smidge more, just a smidge more, just to brighten it up. But besides that, I just think they're exceptional. They're really leaping into action right there. And of course, we also have the babies down here. Check this little man out. I don't know, just really adorable. These little cubs are, like, the cutest thing in the world. But yeah, I do love the coloration on these guys. They look really good, they look really clean, and I can't ask for more from Frontier. Of course, I'm not the big cat expert, I'm sure so many of you guys have your reserved opinions on them, so let me hear them in the comments. I'm really curious to see if this model is up to snuff or not, because, like, you know, obviously none of you guys have really seen it in action before, so I'm really curious to see what you guys have to say about it. And, you know what, I hope you guys are able to educate me on that, because I'm not really the smartest when it comes to big cat physiology. Now, of course, we have one more animal. I really do hope Frontier addresses like the issues with the exhibit box. You can kind of see that there's some reflection issues, so I hope they're able to kind of change that. But I forgot we can even do this right now. Uh, we can do like full transparency inside of those exhibits. So let's find our little friend in here, shall we? 
uh, we of course have the axolotl, or otherwise pronounced in its native nautil language as ocelotl. Uh, which is very funny because it sounds a lot like Ocelot, but these guys are wicked adorable. Oh my gosh Look at these guys. They're absolutely wild. So these guys do have four different color morphs I'm gonna post pictures of them across the screen right now um, Also, the leopard has another color morph. I'll probably put that up right now as well But these guys are really freaking adorable. These guys are really great easily one of my favorite exhibit animals at frontiers released so far obviously they're kind of skill for exhibit exhibit animals kind of just gets better and better and it really is super awesome just to see that they poured in all the love and animations into these guys hopefully while we're watching him he does his little yawn so they do have like a little special animation where they do like their little axolotl yawn it's the cutest thing in the world um, but it's still, regardless, these guys are really awesome. I really do love, like, all the small details they were able to squeeze in here. It really is super awesome just to have this animal in particular represented, because I know I've kind of stressed this point in the past before, up until conclusion, where I've said that I was so happy that they actually included. There we go. Look at him go. He's pogging. Okay. Okay. Oh, dang it. I really wanted to get, like, a screen cap of that. But still, these guys are really great, especially for conservation. Because these guys, unfortunately, are extremely endangered. And that's because of several different factors. They're only found in small pockets of uh, lakes in Mexico. As well as their kind of livelihood being taken up by, you know, the exotic pet trade and stuff like that. Pollution. But it's really great that we finally have the representation that we're really hoping for when it comes to the wild morph of these so that's just my little spiel right there very excited about all of that but they look exceptionally well and i can't wait to see you guys start to play with them now of course before we move on to the new props i do want to flex one thing that i actually keep forgetting to put down in here would you look at that would you look at that could you finally believe that after this long, we do have this sort of, kind of, null path. Uh, it's not exactly the null path we were looking for, but it's still a wonderful thing to have nonetheless. And even the elevated version is really good too. Um, but yeah, that's really good. I'm actually curious to see what's the railing like. Okay, that's a sick railing. Oh my gosh. Okay, yeah, I need to use that in, like, all my parks now, because that's really good. I did not notice that. But of course, we do have our new paths, and stuff to go on said paths. Now we actually, hold on, let me just put the railing on the ground path right there. God, yeah, that looks so clean. But yeah, we of course have the new guest enrichment, or rather, you know, guest education points. These guys are wicked cool. I love how they're animated. And if you can kind of listen in softly, you could hear that they have like these little creaks in here. I just think that's really awesome just for like immersion and stuff like that. But yeah, that's wicked cool just to have like all these new pieces. Even if you don't really use guess, it really is super cool just to see like, you know, them being taken into account. Of course, I'm not really two meters tall in real life. I'm more about like this height, but still. Uh, we also have these ones down here. I believe this is like the... Uh, touch one and then this one is a sound one or is it the other way around i don't really know but still oh yeah we actually have oh that's very interesting i did not know that so you could actually change these out to have like whatever you want in there and you could also do stuff like change out the real sounds so i guess if you want like you know the zoo tycoon extinct menu music yeah Okay, that's actually wicked awesome. I like, yeah, I did not know that. That's really great. Um, but what else can we actually do in here? Because I did not know. Uh, you can put some new backgrounds in there, or you could do, like, you know, whatever things you want to throw down in there. You can throw down, like, you know, shark, I guess. That's wicked cool. I really do like that. I didn't know that. That's really awesome. But moving on to props. Alright, so obviously we're going to have our own little prop tier list video. It's going to be a separate video this time because this video is going to go for way too long. But still, I really want to address everything in here. So of course we do have these. I already showed these off. These are the climbing frames. Again, these guys will have their own video on how to use them and stuff like that. 
And best part of all, they are flexi color, which is really awesome. Uh, of course, I have my reservations about them because they are pretty big props. So in case if you guys do want brachiation in your zoos, you're going to have to make it relatively big, which unfortunately isn't the best scenario, but still, I think it's better than nothing. I know a lot of people will kind of be like, how come they can't brachiate using, I don't know, like the k pop tree? Well, in case if they had to do that, they would have had to make animations for that, unique animations, mind you, uh, to kind of go across each individual branch. I think it's a pretty good system that we have utilizing these only. But still, you guys are free to disagree with me in the comments. But that is flexi color, and we also do have these statues. I know everyone uh, <laughs> was talking with my buddies when these were revealed, and everyone was kind of upset about them because they are kind of stylized. But I think if you guys do find the right uses of them, you could actually make pretty good use out of these guys, especially for doing like copy rocks and stuff like that, so you do have like a whole bunch of different textures. Now unfortunately those these are not able to be recolored at all, which is a little bit of a shame. I would have liked a little bit more customization, but I think all the other props kind of make up for it. But that is something really easy that you can do with some very stylized props. I always love that versatility. I love this style though, I, not, I know not everyone does. But these guys are just the most adorable thing in the world, and it really is super awesome just to have like that kind of style come into play. Now moving on through here, we have a lot more props to actually look at. So I guess we could actually look at our utilities first of all. So we do have this conservation waste bin, which is recolorable. We do have, what is this, the water butt base, uh, recolorable. We have this, which is recolorable. Every single prop in this vicinity is recolorable, which is great. We also have the new reward statue, which is just a nice classic horse statue. Obviously, it's supposed to be the Przewalski's wild horse, but you guys can use it just as like a normal horse statue. You could use it as like a zebra even. I just think that kind of versatility is also great as well. We also have these new lamps, which are really good. So you kind of use them kind of like that. Or even kind of like this. I think this is the way that you're supposed to use them. So you kind of put them like that. I actually think Just Goron made lamps just like this. So this kind of sucks. <laughs> but it's good because I was talking with him earlier. And he's super excited just to go in and replace his stuff. So that's great. But check these guys out. And yes, these are all flexi color as always. Super awesome to see that. Really happy that Frontier understands what we're on about when it comes to making stuff all flexi colored. So that's really awesome to see. We also do have these new light posts. You can see that these guys are really beautiful and they do emit like a nice amount of light. So it's going to be wicked awesome just to decorate your builds with. I could already see these guys being used in like restaurants and stuff. Because they do have that kind of vibe, like that kind of like modern zoo trying to be like, you know, trying to combine realism, modernism and stuff like that. We also have our rain collector. Now this one doesn't really affect gameplay at all, but it still is really good nonetheless. And this one's super cool too. We finally have placeable grass, which is really awesome. But I started to use this part in my builds too. This is just a really good wood texture. So you guys can recolor this part of it. Unfortunately, you can't really flexi-color the grass, which is a little bit of a shame. But you know what? It's totally fine because you get to do some really awesome decks. Look at that and tell me that that is not super clean. Speaking of super clean, we should probably talk about the new slats. So these are, of course, our new wood beam sets, which are really, really really good. I've been using these guys non-stop in all my builds. And yes, of course, guess what? They're flexi color. Yes, I said it here first, folks. Look at that, and they're gorgeous. We also have a new solar light, which is really adorable. So it charges during the day and then emits night during night. We have a few of these in our garden, and it has a really good kind of range for light too, which is going to be really useful for hiding like small light fixtures all throughout your zoos. Moving on from there, I know so many people are, are going to be so excited about the new backstage tools. So these guys, again, believe it or not, are fully flexi color. That is really great to have. So you could have like beautiful, bright color things over here. You could have like a nice bright green rake. You could have a nice uh, 
I don't know, Red Fork or something. You guys have all these options to really mix and match your stuff. And look at this broom. You could even change the bristles. It's super awesome. Uh, what else do we have? We should probably check out the wall signs as well. These guys are really, really awesome. I know so many people didn't really like the stylization of these, but I hope they appreciate the stylization of these pieces in particular. The leopard one is gorgeous. Look at that. I think they nailed like the vibe of a leopard so well with that. But we have three Siming ones. We have a bunch of cute little bee and ladybug ones. We have the Axolotls, which has both versions, which is really, really great. And we even do have some blinds and shutters for your builds as well, for your, like, your windows and stuff, which is really great. And then we also have some more conservation blind slats there as well. And the material that you're seeing back here is the 3D printed wall. We'll see a little, ba a little bit of that in a little bit, but yes, it is flexi color. I just love all the flexi color in here. We also do have the terracotta pot. This one isn't flexi color, but of course this one is. This one is a painted one. Kind of goes hand in hand with the vibes that the uh, reveal stream was kind of going with. So it really is awesome. You guys can mix and match that to your heart's content. Uh, and it's going to be really awesome just to see what you guys actually do with it. And yeah, they do position snap, which is really great. So you could kind of just put them together in a breeze. It really is awesome. We also have a nice little gardening tug, which is really cute. Uh, really cute, yeah. You can put all your produce in there. So we did get a bunch of new produce. We did get carrots. We got cauliflower. Yes. We got like a gourd, or rather otherwise a vegetable marrow. We got potato, and we got pumpkins. And these guys are wicked cool because you can honestly do stuff like, you know, turn them into... A watermelon or something like that and have a lot of fun with that really awesome possibilities for you guys to kind of play around with that stuff over there hope you guys start to explore some stuff like that because it really is super cool and you can even make a pumpkin tool I better see all of these in your builds from now on because everyone needs a pumpkin tool now moving on from there we also do have our nice little cardboard boxes Unfortunately, these guys are not flexi color, but I think that's fine. Uh, we already have so many flexi color things that I think we could honestly do. We could deal with some that are not flexi color. Also, look at the hose and the tap. Like, look at this. Okay, I gotta show you guys this because we use this tap pillar for so long, and I'm just so happy that we can finally deal with not having that little, like, end pieces over there it really is great that we have the standalone piece of that so that's wicked awesome and we also do have a standalone hose as well you can color this one to your heart's content obviously it really is super awesome love seeing that we also do have this a wall hook so that's going to be really awesome i already know all the bro nation peeps are going to be flipping out over this piece because i can see so many implied animals so many implied statues and stuff really be made with that and guess what? Yes, it's dually flexi color for some reason. <laughs> so there are two flexi color channels on that little item. Gonna be really awesome. We also do have the trellis, so it's gonna be wicked awesome just to see you guys kind of put this together. Uh, you guys can kind of make your own little vegetable gardens with stuff like that. We also do have this one. This one is really cool though. This is like the hexagon, so you can use it perfectly for the bees which is going to be wicked awesome as well. They kind of snap together really perfectly, which is wicked awesome. The gutter set as well is really gorgeous. Uh, really love like the diversity in the pipes that we were able to get through here. I've never had so much fun actually putting gutters on my buildings recently. So you guys will be seeing a lot of that in our upcoming speed builds. Really is super awesome just to see this set kind of come into play. Uh, but what I think a lot more people are going to care about are these pieces right over here. Uh, these are, of course, our new bench sets, like our new guest facilities. So you guys can find these in the facilities tab right over here. Really awesome pieces in here. We get a nice new kind of relatively modern bench. We get a new nice relatively modern bin. We get a new picnic bench. And we also get our new umbrella, all completely flexi colored, which is great. We also do have the insect hotel, otherwise known as a little bit of a beehive. Uh, this one is more so just for wild insects to kind of come and nest 
and it goes in really good with the conservation theme. It really is super awesome. And in fact, I'm gonna show you guys a little something that Goron pointed out. Uh, he was looking at the picture uh, that Frontier showed the other day, and he was like, you know, it looks kind of like my beehive. And I want to put the two of them together and kind of show them off. I think that's a little uncanny how close that looks. I think that is super cute. Uh, it's just super awesome just to see that come into play. But yeah, we also have the 3D printed vault once again over here. And yes, fully flexi color. Gonna be really awesome for builds with all that stuff. And we also do have the conservation air conditioning set. So in order to look this up, you search up aircon. Uh, and then you can find all these pieces over here. You have a lot of flexi color options with these guys. Gonna be wicked awesome just to see what you guys are able to achieve with all that. Super awesome pieces. Can't wait to see what kind of like in-depth stuff you guys do with that. But of course, this is always my favorite part over here. These are the new trees. Uh, and foliage too. I think what everyone's gonna care about are these grass pieces. As well as the flowers. I think these are all extremely useful. We also have the sunflowers, which are perfect for little gardens. They're the cutest little things in the world. But check these guys out. The Yorkshire grass. What's this called? Yorkshire fog grass. This is going to be super awesome and super helpful for making like these nice planted areas. And we also do have Siberian pea shrub. We have the dead dry drain grass. We also have common saltwort as well as a dry version of it. Which is going to be super awesome. This is going to be super good for like deserts and stuff like that. Uh, and we also have our fig tree. So we have three different versions of that. These guys are awesome as well. We have the Aquaralia tree, I think. Uh, and we also have the Korean pine tree. Not really sold on the Korean pine tree. It looks a little bit too uh, bright. I don't really know. <laughs> <laughs> but it does look a little jarring compared to the rest of the foliage. Uh, I think the Aquarelia tree is really beautiful, though. I really do love how well it looks. The bark is really nice, too, which I think gives it a nice little texture. But I think what everyone's going to care about are these small grass pieces. But still, that is pretty much it for our update video. So, of course, later today, I will have our first episode of the City Conservation Center. So be sure to keep your eyes peeled for that. Can't wait for you guys to see all that come into play. Let me know your favorite part of this pack so far. I hope you guys go check it out. The link is in the description down below. We will be having a giveaway for the pack as well if you cannot afford it. So be sure to stay tuned for the following speed builds in order to wait for the, you know, little giveaway announcement. Be sure to stay subscribed to keep up to date with all your leafy goodness. And I can't wait to see you guys in the next video. We're going to actually watch our friend up here, Breaky8, to end the video. Thank you guys so much for watching. And I can't wait to see you all in the next video. Take care and have the most wonderful of wonderful days. Bye-bye now.